Hi YouTube and welcome to my channel. My name is Patrick and I haven't used Mac OS for a few years. The most recent version of Mac OS that I've had the chance to use is Mac OS Mavericks, which came out getting close to a decade ago. And you know, things have changed quite a bit since then. So I was lucky enough to pick up a Macintosh recently and I've been using it for the last little while. Tornado Sirens. But I picked up a Macintosh and I've been using it for a little while, and I'd like to share some of my thoughts on the reasons why it works the way it does. I find it very important to understand the why behind the how, in terms of, you know, why does the system behave the way it does? What's the logic behind that? And how does that logic apply to other aspects of using the computer? It's valuable information to know, and I'm going to walk you through it step by step. Alright, so Mac OS looks pretty similar from the outside compared to the last time I saw it. You still have this dock at the bottom, you have these menu icons up here at the top, and then you have your system icons over here on this side. So, you know, it's not very different. Another thing that when you have an open window, if you just close the window, the application is still running, which you can see by that little dot down there underneath the icon. And if you click on it, you'll see it opens instantly. This is because when you close the window in Mac OS, it doesn't close the program. Now the logic for this is that you shouldn't really worry about closing programs because the system is going to try to use as much RAM as possible. And that might sound counterintuitive, but here's the logic. If you have a bunch of free RAM, then you're not using it. And if you're not using your RAM, then there's no point in having it, right? So it saves your programs that you have running in the background in the RAM so the next time you go to use them, it's instantaneous. And, you know, that's, that's a really beneficial aspect of managing your running programs like this. Now, you can quit a program very easily just by, you know, it's two clicks to do it, whichever way you choose. You can go up here to the menu and then quit, or you can right-click on it in, in the dock at the bottom and hit the quit button. So that's the first thing to kind of realize. You, you leave your programs running in the background, and, you know, if things get slow and the system doesn't fix it itself for whatever reason, then just close a couple things. Uh, but really, it's you want to leave stuff open because it speeds up the process of moving between your applications. All right, so let's talk about the differences in Mac OS's desktop metaphor. The thing about the Mac OS desktop metaphor is that it's very abstract, and I think that's a good thing. So, you know, traditional desktops, they were all set up in such a way that, you know, the analog to everything was files and folders and paper documents on top of a wooden desk. You know, that's where the phrase desktop comes from. But we've really evolved past the point of using a pen and paper metaphor to describe applications and documents. What I mean by that is, uh, let's take a closer look at one of these features that really highlights what I mean. This is Stage Manager. So you'll see I have these icons over here on the left-hand side, these thumbnails, and I have one application open here in the middle. So if I click on one of these, you'll see it moves this one to the side, and I can actually drag and drop these together to create different sets of applications. And so the idea here is that you will naturally create these sets of applications based on different tasks. So for example, if I have Visual Studio Code, let me just move that back over here. If I have Visual Studio Code, maybe I want to work with my terminal while I'm using that. And maybe if I'm making a diagram, I want to access some files in my folders here to put on in the diagram. And now I have these two different tasks where maybe I'm writing the documentation here on this one, but I'm writing the code and testing in this one. And where it gets really powerful is when you compound this with the virtual desktops. If not all the modern desktop environments, you have this concept of multiple desktops. So you can see here I have four of them and I can switch between them by clicking on them very simply. That, that adds an extra layer is what I'm trying to get at because your different desktops can have different stages and those stages are of course unique to each desktop meaning you can have one for work, one for personal and then you can have your tasks divided up into stages on each virtual desktop. 
And so when you combine these two ideas, it gets you some very powerful organizational and frankly easy to use ways of managing your running applications. So really, you don't need to worry about things like RAM or running applications or CPU usage in macOS. The system takes care of all of that kind of stuff for you. In fact, it's, it's really a waste of time to pay attention to your RAM usage or CPU usage. It just let the system do what it does. That's different than what you have to do with Windows or Linux, where it's somewhat more likely that something will go awry and eat up all your resources. And not to say that macOS is bug-free. There's plenty of bugs in this system, specifically around Stage Manager, and I hope that they do something about that soon. Uh, so macOS does have some shortcomings, though. You can't, for example, if we just zoom in here and try to make it so these windows take up two parts of the screen by dragging them to the edge, you can see nothing happens. That's a really useful feature. If you have multiple windows open of the same application, clicking on the icon does not cycle through them. Well, it'll cycle through ones that are on different desktops, but if you have two on the same desktop, then it's not going to cycle through them, and I can't get the dock to come up. There we go. So yeah, if I have these two right here, I have to manually find them and click on them. And as you saw, we have three of these windows open, but there's only one instance of it in the task switcher. So it can be really difficult to get to different windows you have of the same application. So that's something to be aware of. And there's also just some deficiencies in the dock, like if I click on the icon, it doesn't minimize. If I hover over it, it doesn't give me a preview. And it's fancy and slick looking. Some good things about it, though, would be these folder shortcuts that you can put down here, like here's my downloads, and that's super nice. So I can just click on this and take a file and open it in a program, just like that, which is super handy. Uh, so, yeah, neat stuff. So macOS isn't perfect, but I've been using Linux for so long that coming to something with a little bit more application compatibility is really like opening up a well of new surprises. Uh, you know, you can just run so much more software on macOS than you can on Linux, and the UX of macOS is superior to anything you can get on a Linux desktop, in my, in, in my opinion. I... Mm, it makes it hard to choose. You know, if you have the option, I'd say probably go with macOS, right? But if you're a privacy advocate who is very stringent in their requirements of what software they run, obviously you're going to be better served by Linux. Also, if you're into gaming, you don't want to use a Mac. You want to be using Linux or Windows. Uh, Linux is really good for gaming these days. Windows is obviously the best. And if you need application compatibility, Windows is where you want to go because it will have the largest library of applications. Anyway, my name was Patrick. I hope you enjoyed this look into macOS and why it works the way it does. And I'll see you in the next one. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button.